senior midfielder from Glen Gardner, New Jersey, number 34, Hannah Ryan. The head coach of the tribe is Hillary Fratsky, and the assistant coaches for the tribe are Kelly McPeak and Corinne Dross. And we're getting set for opening face-off between Delaware and William & Mary, the first of two games in our CAA Women's Game of the Week doubleheader here on LSN. Travis Eldridge back with you, ready for opening draw back in the studio as these two teams get set to battle it out in Virginia. William & Mary and Delaware both looking for their first wins of the season in conference play the tribe coming in at 0 and 2 after a tough 0 for weekend a weekend ago meanwhile delaware 0 and 1 in conference play entering this one take a look at the blue hens getting ready under the watchful eye of coach katiri linville head coach for this blue hen squad Delaware, a team that had won three of four entering this past weekend before they, they took the loss against James Madison, 10 to three. That loss against the Dukes, the lowest scoring output of the season for the Blue Hens, but James Madison, obviously a defending national champs, a team that's been ranked in the top 20 throughout this season, always a tough out. For William and Mary, uh, they've gone through a difficult stretch over the last couple of games. Uh, a, a couple of really difficult losses as they had the OT loss to Coastal Carolina. They had, had another loss and then just this past time out last Sunday had a lead with 10 minutes to go but couldn't quite close out. And so they entered tonight on a three game losing streak sitting at 0 and 2 on the season. One thing to keep your eye on in this one is the, the draw controls. William & Mary entering tonight, ranked third in the conference in draws control, draw controls per game, averaging nearly 13. Also first in ground balls per game in conference play, nearly 20 per game. So William & Mary, a team that is relatively young. You're going to see a lot of freshman contributors throughout the, the tonight. A team looking to find their footing in conference play and bounce back and find their way into the mix as they as we go down the stretch and look toward the CAA tournament at the end of the year. Getting a look at number 25, Julia Dambly. 30 draw controls on the season for the Blue Hens. Also with 10 caused turnovers and. One of the pieces around the draw circle for Delaware, the, the main piece though in the center, Caroline Farley, 61 draw controls to lead this Blue Hens team. She also has 28 points on the season, an important part for Delaware as we get set to go in Virginia. Maddie Torgerson at the draw control circle for William and Mary and we are off at our CAA game of the week the first of two in our CAA game of the week doubleheader and loose ball scooped up initially by William and Mary but it caused turnover and the Blue Hens will have a chance to clear and get their first offensive set of the evening. Sarah Comstock and company get it into the offensive end for the Blue Hens. And a quick whistle and an early yellow card going up against William and Mary. So an early advantage here for the Blue Hens. Claire D'Antonio took that shot up near the near her head. And so the yellow card on Ann McGlynn gives Delaware an extra man opportunity. D'Antonio with 18 points on the season, including 15 goals. Sent back to the top of the arc. 
feet in front, falling down. I don't know if it got a piece of the cage or the goalie, but we have a whistle. And Sydney Rouza will get a free position opportunity. Rouza feeds down low, and it's a goal. Cashing in is Christine Long. The attacker makes it one nothing. Blue Hens. Delaware goal scored by Christine Long. Able to cash in on the extra player opportunity here for Delaware. On the free position, it's long and a little bit of traffic traffic down on the crease, but cashes in and it's an early lead for the Blue Hens. Delaware team leading into that loss to James Madison last weekend that was feeling pretty good wins over UConn on the road a win over Oregon and at Louisville an ACC opponent so it had some momentum building before that loss to JMU and they get a draw control here as Caroline Farley wins it to herself. And another offensive possession here for the Blue Hens. Rousa lost it, but a whistle. It'll keep with the Blue Hens here at this end of the field. Foul on William & Mary is Olivia Harple. As Rousa moves up past goal line extended. Feed into some traffic somehow. Delaware keeps, but it's stripped away. Loose ball won by the Tribe. A whistle, William & Mary will keep moving with it as Delaware retreats. And our first look at this Tribe offense this evening. It's a William Mary team that averages just over 10 goals per game, nearly 11 on the season. And they set things up against Delaware. It's Grace Ahonen working at the top of the arc. Swings it over to Belmar Tire. That pass a little too high, and the grass can't keep it in. A natural grass surface in Williamsburg, Virginia, but can't slow it up enough, and Delaware will get it on the William & Mary turnover. Blue hands quickly the other way, a chance to go unsaddled. Streaking through, shot is saved. A nice stop in, say, in goal by Elsa Rawl to stop the Blue Hen transition opportunity. Sarah Bedard bearing down. But shoots high and Rawl up to the challenge. And he got a whistle as Delaware was hounding Grace Ahonen, the freshman from Wellesley, Massachusetts. Couple of these top scorers for William & Mary so far, freshman, Belmar Tire, a freshman, number 12 in white, coming out of Houston, Texas. So a, a young team looking to find their way through a difficult, always challenging CAA conference slate. From the wing, it's Martire. Back up to Honan. Far side, an opening and a save. Brewster standing tall in cage at the other end. Back to back, nice saves, but a whistle. And uh, Blue Hens will have a chance to clear. Both goalies getting some early stops here. K 
Kate Brewster from Manchester, Maryland, the sophomore. Delaware has a chance to add to this lead. It's Mia De Ruggiero. Leads the team in points and she goes top shelf. Mia makes it 2 0 in Blue Hands. Scored by Mia De Ruggiero. Unassisted. Another look as she beats her defender. The slide not quite fast enough, and De Ruggiero, a player that has loaded up on the assists, 39 assists so far this season. That's actually tied for second in the nation in assists so far this season, something we talked about in the pregame. But this time, showing off her finishing ability as well, her 11th goal of the season, now up to 50 points. De Ruggiero, the junior from Baltimore, Maryland. Back to the draw circle as the Blue Hens look to have an early advantage there. A whistle as Christine Long fought for it and she wins it. So another offensive set here for the Blue Hens. Exactly the start you were looking for if you're Delaware coming off the tough loss a week ago. Working from X, that pass just a little too high. Delaware able to track it down. This is Sarah Comstock. Six points on the season, three goals and three assists. Her pass just barely gets through. Back out to Comstock, slicing in, kick save. Just enough of it by Rawl to keep it out. Back up though, goes to Delaware. Claire D'Antonio operates at the top. Well, give and go as Bedard couldn't find her target, but Delaware keeps. Slicing through, it's stripped away, but a whistle. And Sydney Rouser once again with a free position chance on that far hash. Rouza slicing in, bounce shot goes. A great start for the Blue Hens. They're up 3 0. Delaware goal scored by Sydney Rouza, unassisted. We saw Sydney Rouza on the first goal tonight. On the free position, she fed it down to the crease. This time decides, I'm going to do this one myself. She gets it by Rawl. An early two points for Sydney Rouza. Rouza now up to 21 goals on the season, 26 points. Excuse me, 20 goals on the season. Now 26 points as she also added an assist so far, her sixth of the year on that first goal. Another draw control won by the Blue Hens. Been important so far for Delaware in this fast start. Wrapping around, that shot just sails a little wide. The rebound though tracked down by Bedard. Comes Danica Switch in on offense for the Blue Hens. 
Back out to Bedard. Number two in royal blue. Bedard gets an opening. That shot just enough to get by the goalie. Little knuckleball, the off speed works. Bedard Delaware's got it all clicking at four to nothing. Bedard, unassisted. We're going to have to take another look at this because it looked like maybe a little bit of her stick was nicked as she got that shot off. And just enough. Yeah, just enough to throw off Raw. A tough break for the goalie for William and Mary. Not much she can do. Trying to react to that shot going low. And then the bounce shot gets by her. So we've got an early timeout here on the field as Delaware is off to a terrific start. 4 nothing. Less than eight minutes into this opening half. Game one of our CAA Game of the Week doubleheader. Coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we head to Towson, Maryland. As Elon travels to take on the Tigers, an important CAA conference game for both of those teams as well. The Phoenix entering the night at 1-1, one and one, while Del uh, Towson was tripped up by James Madison, just like this Delaware team was last weekend, sitting at 0-1, a Towson team looking to bounce back after a really, really difficult non-conference slate where they did not have as much success as they have in past years. Delaware off to a 4-0 lead in this one. We've got goals from all over. Four different goal scorers for Delaware so far. Sarah Bedard getting on the score sheet along with Sydney Rauza, Christine Long, and Mia De, Mia De Ruggiero. Sydney Rauza leading the way with two points so far, also had an assist on that opening goal on the free position. William and Mary calling the timeout here just to kind of settle things down. A, a tough start they got off to, but this is a team in, in William & Mary that went on a, a series of different runs in that loss back on Sunday. Ended up in a loss, but a team that has shown the ability to string three, four goals together in a, in a stretch. The big key has been at the draw control so far, a 3-1 edge early on for Delaware. Looking to continue that as once again, Caroline Farley goes to work. Loose ball once again, won by the Blue Hens and it's Christine Long with the draw control. Delaware not looking to slow down early in this one. De Ruggiero feeds in front, just enough of it to keep it out as Rawl. And a big ground ball won by William and Mary. Chance for the Tribe to get an offensive set here as it's been dominated so far by Delaware, but it's intercepted. Great play by on defense by Delaware. He co here comes Mia De Ruggiero. Good hustle to get back by the Tribe. A whistle on the loose ball will stay with Delaware. Does he know? It'll go to William and Mary. They get De Ruggiero there on the foul. It's a golden chance for the Blue Hens, but good work by the William & Mary defense to get back in transition and not allow Mia De Ruggiero to get free. So now we get an offensive set for William & Mary. Lauren Russell on that far wing. Now back to the freshman and retire. William and Mary looks to get free. Double team comes. Back out top to Harple. Now to Martire.
Good defense so far on this set by Delaware. They take a chance. Feet in the middle, couldn't be completed. Big ground ball. Finally won by the Tribe, and they keep the offensive set. Shot clock winding down, a long try, just well wide, and it goes to the corner. As we have a chance in transition, we're going to send you to the field. Some traffic issues, but Scott Sudikoff is there. Travis Eldridge, I'll see you at halftime. Scott, take it away. Thank you very much, Travis Eldridge. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore now here with you at William & Mary in Williamsburg at a Martin Family Stadium where Delaware is on top 4 to nothing. have not yet played 10 minutes in this one. And off a free position, a good-looking chance down low. And getting fouled there was Caroline Farley as she got in close to Elsa Rall. And we'll have another free position here for Delaware. And Delaware just absolutely rolling four different goal scorers already on the day. And you certainly don't want to give up this opportunity with a Delaware team that has just owned every statistical category so far in this contest. Really doing a great job being efficient on the offensive end of the field, getting lots of different people involved. And of course, that was a big concern for William and Mary coming into this game. Shots for the game are 8-0. Caroline Farley taking that free position. It was whistled down before the shot. And I think we'll have Farley doing it over. And to your point, Monica, 8 to nothing. the shot attempts. Delaware has won four of the five draw controls. And of course, Caroline Farley, one of the top players on this Delaware team. And that was a great shot, but an even better stop by the goalkeeper for William and Mary Elsa Rawl. And that was a huge play for the junior goalkeeper. Yeah, it's her fourth save already in the early going. Her 11-5-2 goals against average is fourth in the conference coming into play today. Going to need her to make a couple more stops like that. And an unfortunate pass there for William and Mary, you just don't want to give Delaware opportunities like that to pick off the pass. And those Delaware defenders, they are so strong and very experienced on that back row, just anticipated that pass. And a William and Mary turnover, and you hate to do that to your goalkeeper after she makes a big stop. William and Mary playing a player down right now. Beth Kirk received a yellow card about 45 seconds ago, so Delaware with these player advantage right now looking for a 5-0 lead. Shot bounced wide by Christine Long. And ground ball for William and Mary. So still got a minute left on the yellow card here to William and Mary. Already the second that's been issued to the Tribe. That was a quality opportunity, though, for Delaware on their offensive end of the field. The shot just not on target, but it was good ball movement and great positioning for Long to try to get another goal for Delaware. Here's Meredith Hughes on the far side. She gets fouled. Still 38 seconds left on the penalty time. And then this game will go back to even strength. Four different goal scorers for Delaware have been Christine Long, Max Di uh, excuse me, Mia DiRuggero, Cindy Rousa, and Sarah Bedard. And William and Mary here may just want to hold the ball until they get back to even strength. Hughes is holding it out beyond the 12 meters. Now spinning inside of it. 10 seconds left on the penalty. Good cut inside. Maddie Torgerson had it jarred away by Stephanie Aker. Penalty time is over, and there's 25 seconds left on the possession clock. So now William & Mary can set up and look for a shot. They have not attempted a shot yet in this game. And of course, on their second to last opportunity, the shot clock was a factor. And a great job. Dodging through the defense and scoring Lauren Russell, the freshman from Denver, her 24th goal of the season, coming off a career high five goals on Sunday against Drexel. If anyone was going to score for William and Mary right now, you have to think Lauren Russell was a great candidate, doing a great job through contact and through traffic. And that really tells you what kind of player she is right now. Just the composure to keep possession of the ball and to place that shot exactly where she wanted it. So again, you're going to see all the defenders coming at Lauren Russell. She does not play like a freshman. 
And one of the things that Coach Hillary Frasky said That's exactly was what she described about her, right. Was exactly that. She's not afraid to get hit. She's not afraid of the contact. She will just keep going. She has that rare mentality, and that was definitely on display by Lauren Russell. She has notched a hat trick in three consecutive games, seventh in the conference in goals per game at 2.1 entering the day today. Gets William and Mary on the board. A little bit less than 12 minutes gone by. And Delaware on top, 4-1. to one. William & Mary looking for their second draw control victory, and they will get it. Nearest there was Star Howard, the star in terms of the draw controls for William & Mary, and top four in the conference. So now the Tribe have a chance for back-to-back -back tallies. She is such a special player. It's hard to believe that Star Howard is only a freshman. She comes out of the Bullet School in the D.C. area, and already the record holder for a single season for the Tribe in terms of draw control wins. And she's only played nine games. That is quite an impressive, or sorry, in 11 games. That is quite an impressive statistic and just tells you what lies ahead for her in the future. Coming in with 58 draw control victories. So the Tribe working on offense again, averaging 11 goals a game. That's fourth in the conference. Top team in ground balls per game, and a loose ball there picked up by Hughes, the junior. And well, of course, what you have to be so excited about with this William & Mary team, they have so much young talent on their roster. They have just excelled already this freshman class. It's a very large freshman class. We've talked about Russell. And there's another one of the freshmen, Bell Materi, and that'll count, count the goal. Her 32nd of the season, the freshman from Houston. And so the Tribe get the goal, get the draw control victory, now get back-to-back -back tallies and have cut the Delaware lead in half. As we take another look here at Martiri, working around defenders, and you see just she extended her stick just to get the right placement on that shot. That was a very smart play by the freshman because she could have directed it more at the goalkeeper, but instead she extends it so it goes a little more to the outside, but perfect placement so it's just within the post. A smart decision by Martiri and these freshmen, they have been getting it done for Hillary Fratsky. Martiri, 2018 U.S. Lacrosse All-American out of the Kincaid School from Houston, Texas, has got her team back within two. And you have to love the composure of William and Mary because the opening eight or so minutes did not go their way, but they have kept their heads in this contest. They've gotten some great goals. Howard is not going to win that one, but they are battling as hard as they possibly can against an exceptional Delaware team. Delaware coming in, a 6-6 six six overall record. Did have a three-game winning streak. It was snapped last Friday with the loss against 10th-ranked James Madison, losing that game 10-3. But they did force 25 turnovers. 15 of them were caused, so those were both season highs. Here's a turnover caused by the Tribe. Exactly. And Mickelgan doing a great job, once again anticipating being in the right place at the right time. Lauren Russell gets it ahead for Martiri. And this is a huge possession right here for William and Mary because they have all the momentum right now, having scored the back-to-back -back goals. They've gotten Russell involved. They've gotten Martiri involved. Of course, they have another great freshman, Grace Ahonen, who's also a great goal scorer for this team. Tribe coming in five and six, have lost three consecutive games, but they've all been by three goals or less. Losing on Sunday to Drexel 15 to 13, a game that they led by two goals in the final 10 minutes, but the Dragons came all the way back for the victory. And William and Mary looking for that first conference victory in a couple of seasons. They have gone winless in CAA play each of the last two years. Shooting space violation going against Delaware. And we'll have a free position now for Lauren Russell, who has scored eight goals this year on free positions, eight of 15. You just see her working so well together with Martiri out on the field. They look like they've played together for years, and yet both freshmen on this squad. Going to get it off from the eight-meter area there, so no real shot available. And that ball will bounce into the goalie, Kate Brewster, sophomore from Manchester, Maryland. Third in the conference in goals against average, 10.15. And a frustrating possession right there for William and Mary because they did not get the shot that they were looking for. 
but again, they have the momentum right now, and you're seeing that feed into their defense as well. They got that cause turnover on that last defensive possession, and that's exactly what they have to do right here as well. Really pressure, anticipate those passes, and make sure they try to prevent those cutters from getting in on the inside. Delaware coming in, just played one conference game so far, the loss to James Madison. Picked to be fifth in the league this year. Of course, the top four make it into the tournament, which will be hosted by James Madison May 3rd and May 5th. Good cut and shot, but saved there by Rawl. I have been extremely impressed with Elsa Rawl, even though she just lost possession right there. She's Needs seen the help. ball very well. She'll get the help, though, from Beth Kirk, who was able to scoop it up on the far side, Junior from Chatham, New Jersey. And in the end, William and Mary able to get the possession and now look to clear. And Elsa Rawl, she really has stepped up for William and Mary this year. She's already been CAA Defensive Player of the Week. Martiri with the dish, losing control of it with Sophie Kopech. So that had a lot of promise on the good feet ahead to Martiri, but Kopech could not get a shot off. And now Delaware looking to move a bit in transition. De Ruggiero who now has 40 assists on the season. And a nice job by William and Mary getting back on defense, not letting Delaware take advantage of an unsettled situation. I should say she has 11 goals now and now 50 points on the season to go with the 39 assists that she already came in with. De Ruggiero who leads the conference in assists per game and is second in points per game, number 38 out there in blue. Claire D'Antonio, and a little delayed whistle. Now the whistle blows and the foul against William and Mary. So 44 seconds on the shot clock here for the Blue Hens. Plenty of time. This is a free position for Di Ruggiero. She's just going to back it out and put a pass below the goal line for Sarah Bedard. And I think that was the smart decision. They have plenty of time on the shot clock. They don't want to force anything. And yeah, that one, Rawl cannot stop. 5-2 Delaware. And I believe that was Farley. Delaware Caroline Rose Farley with her 18th goal of the season. Was the player of the week in the CAA last week for a four goal, 12 draw control performance against Oregon. And when you see on that replay, you can really see what a tough shot this was as she works around defenders, is dodging around, and then how quickly she gets the shot off. And again, the placement of that shot for Caroline Farley, that was an extremely smart play, especially under the pressure. And again, just how quickly she was able to get that shot after working around her defender is one of the reasons she has been so successful on the season. Five different goal scorers now for Delaware. Team that averages only 10.3 goals per game. That's fifth in the conference. Defensively, they stand out at giving up less than 10 per game. And off the draw control, going to get it. Claire Highscott, freshman from Falls Church, Virginia. The victory for the Tribe and Martiri. Spins inside the offensive zone for William and Mary. And a nice draw control win there for the Tribe, not letting Delaware take back too much momentum because, again, the momentum has been with the Tribe as of late. And if they can find an answer right here, it's going to give them a lot of confidence as they continue through this game. Draw controls are 5-3 in favor of Delaware. Atiri spinning back towards the middle, makes the pass out top. Grace Ahonen. Now Meredith Hughes. Of course, one of the nice things about being a freshman is coming into the season, people don't know a lot about you, and so you don't draw as much attention. People don't know what your habits are and what your tendencies are, but people certainly starting to figure out with Martiri's a great interception there by the Delaware defense, number 28, Claire D'Antonio. Yeah, the pass a little bit high there, and D'Antonio able to snare it out of there, her seventh cause turnover of the season. Junior from Moorestown, New Jersey. And here come the Blue Hens with some transition. Cindy Rausa, who has already scored one today for the Blue Hens. Let's see if she goes all the way. And she draws the foul just as she got inside the eight meters. So Rausa scored her 
20th goal earlier, junior from Ambler, Pennsylvania. Her older sister, Rachel, graduating from the Georgetown women's lacrosse program last year. And they actually got to play against each other. I believe it was last season. So that was a great day for the Rouses to have both daughters out on the field. I believe Georgetown won that one, but I know the Rouse parents just happy to see both of their daughters on the same field without having to, to make difficult choices in terms of games to attend. This is a front end of a double header here on LSN today. CAA game of the week, Elon and Towson coming up next. Possession clock is below 40 here for Delaware. Plenty of time. Pass the wide of the cutter, but plenty of space to go track it down. Ball really slows down on this grass here on this field, so that was pretty easy for Farley to go get. Delaware's getting some good movement inside, and they certainly are looking for those cutters, trying to get the high percentage shot, but the shot clock now really starting to wind down. It's at 15. Pass to the weak side to the side of the crease and getting knocked down was Di Ruggiero. And a free position coming for the Blue Hens. For the junior from Baltimore. It was and only a, attempted one shot off a free position, but she is at 100%. And earlier she elected not to take the free position shot, but this is a different situation with 10 on the shot clock. She's still gonna try to set something up. And stopped there by Rawl. And it really goes to what we were told about Di Ruggiero though, that she just loves the, the ability to be the quarterback and dish instead of maybe try to score. Maybe in that instance, though, with 10 on the shot clock, her coach might want to see her try to shot instead. Particularly because I don't know that that was the shot that they wanted. It was a high shot, easily read by the goalkeeper, one of the easier saves for a goalkeeper to make. Hillary Fratsky in her sixth year as the head coach of William & Mary, of course an assistant at Northwestern for three years, won two national championships, and had an All-American standout in her time playing at Towson, when she was a player of the year back in 2008 and 2010. Both of these coaches on each side, a former standouts within the conference, or for schools in the conference now. I believe Delaware, when uh, Coach Linville played, was not yet in the CAA. And once again, Materi just doing a great job generating for her squad. Now she's going to get the free position opportunity, and this is going to be a really nice one. Pretty favorable hash mark. Scored her 32nd goal earlier. She's 5 for 15 this year. On free positions. Saved. Brewster got the stick on it. That was a really nice stop by Kate Brewster. Got some experience last year, and has stepped up for her team coming into this game already 90 saves on the year. Yeah, Coach Linville telling us 100% ready to step up this year and be the starter. And she thinks that the goalie and the defense together have really been able to find that uh, that synergy that you're looking for as a unit. And giving up only 9.9 .9 goals per game and only held James Madison to just 10, which was a great feat, unfortunately, only could score three against JMU. Well, it's certainly a great moral victory, though, I think, for William and, uh, sorry, for, for Delaware. They just learned that they have to be able to finish, and that was one of the big takeaways in that game. But what they did on the defensive end, I think they have to be pretty happy with against a team like James Madison. Meredith Hughes draws a foul. Free position coming. Told to watch out for her shot, has great power shot. Let's see if she tries to use it here. Instead, passes in front. Good fake, and then a score by Sophie Kopech. Well done. So Hughes allows Kopech to cut. Kopech fakes once, and then able to beat Kate Brewster to make it 5-3. This was such a smart play, so well executed. First of all, Hughes spotting the player with a higher percentage shot, and then it was such a smart decision by Kopech with the fake. The goalkeeper went for it, and she was able to get the that she wanted as we get another look at the angle right there. And you love the unselfishness out of Meredith Hughes spotting the better play for her team. And just like that, William & Mary cutting this back down to just a two-goal lead. Ninth goal of the season for the sophomore from Johns Creek, Georgia. Had a four-goal game against George Mason to open up the season. One of 
William & Mary's five wins this year. Wins over George Mason, Old Dominion, Longwood, Davidson, and VCU. Star Howard with the draw control, and she'll be met by Shante Sims. Sims, sure will bring up a little bit more as this game goes on, but just one of the, certainly one of the best defenders in the CAA. Here's Christine Long. She gives it up. And now Delaware back on offense after William & Mary turned it over after the draw control win. And interesting about Star Howard, so she won the draw control and she got in traffic and had the ball checked loose. And, you know, an interesting thing that Hillary Fratsky told us about Howard and which is something that I think just resonates a lot is that she is, she's so hard on herself. She expects so much of herself. And earlier this year, she wasn't happy with how she had performed against Drexel in terms of the draw controls, was really beating herself about it. And her attitude is she's just gonna get better and it, it won't happen again. And you just love the fight and Star Howard. Ball was dropped by Rousa, and then Grace Ohonen able to guide it to her goalie, Elsa Rall, and William and & Mary will take over possession with 7.57 left to go in the first half. Delaware with a two-goal lead. Delaware, though, led 4 nothing eight minutes into this game. And William & Mary able to score two of the last three and certainly steady the ship here on their home field in Williamsburg. And again, just the composure and not getting rattled, but realizing you just have to go back to the basics, the fundamentals, what you do well. And we haven't seen them force a lot of shots during this run that they have been making. They've been very smart about what they've been doing on the offensive end of the field, and they've been finishing. So now a chance for William & Mary to get the closest they've been since it was one nothing. Arteri working from the left side. Double comes from behind, but she got fouled. So Delaware defensively sending that double team kind of late. That was uh, Isabel Schmidt coming over that gets called for the foul. As we're gonna get another look here at the contact. And you see it right there. And one thing you certainly notice in watching William and Mary play on the offensive end of the field is how much Martiri is involved in the offense, how much she has the ball, how much she facilitates for her team. And again, at such a young age, she has a lot of responsibility on her shoulders. She is handling it so well. Hughes out front, now swings it to Martiri. Good face dodge, got a step, and then knocked down near the top of the crease. And I believe, got to really take your pick on a foul. There was one that she worked through initially and then before she got knocked down as well. When we were talking about Russell, not afraid to draw the contact, and Martiri just went straight to the goal just put her head down, and she was committed to getting that offensive opportunity. Martiri had her last free position stopped. This time, she bounces it in by Brewster to make it 5-4 with exactly seven minutes to go. Second goal of the game for Bell Martiri in her 33rd of the season. You're going to see it on this replay. This is about an impossible shot to stop for a goalkeeper. Martiri so smart with what she did right there, the bounce shot. Really mixing things up, giving different looks to Brewster. And this was a huge goal right here for William and Mary because with this they cut the lead to one. Again, they were down four to zero. What a comeback. And Martiri has been an impact player for the tribe. So second of the game, 33rd of the season. Bell's mother, Eva, played collegially at Yale. And now Bell in her first year at William and Mary. Loose ball out the draw control and foul going on William and Mary. I think it was Star Howard away from the ball. They got whistled for pushing off against uh, De Ruggiero. So Delaware will take over with their lead all the way down to one after leading four nothing less than 10 minutes into this game. First 10 minutes of the game, William and Mary had not even had a shot yet. And now they've been able to fight back and make it a 5-4 game. But now I think this is an important possession for Delaware on their end of the field because, again, all the momentum has been with William & Mary, and they want to reassert themselves. That was a very good move by Cindy Rousa, but stopped along the post by Elsa Rall. So it's been Martiri on the offensive end. It's been Rall on the defensive end. She has come up with some huge plays. She's a big reason why this is just a one-goal advantage right now for the Blue Hens. She had a 20-save performance 
Back in mid-March against Davidson, which was a one-goal victory in the end for William & Mary, 9-8. to eight. So to make 20 saves in a game, your team wins 9-8. to eight. Obviously, I'm sure she got a few pats on the back after that one. And, of course, she's only a junior. She'll be back for another year next year. And you just think about this William & Mary team. Again, so much talent, and they just continue to grow and grow. Well, think about as a junior, she has not yet won a game in CAA play, and how much would love to get that one here today and snap a seven-game losing streak against Delaware. That is a lot of motivation, a lot of locker room material for the Tribe. Delaware just trying to get back to a position that they've been the last couple of years, getting into the CAA tournament. Losing, though, in the semifinal round each of the last two years to James Madison. Shot clock is at 20 here. So the Tribe is going to have to manage the clock and be aware. Kopech, good pass to the front. It pops out of the stick of Artiri. Loose ball and then denied. Brewster. And then it came loose again. And now we have a score for William and & Mary. And I'll admit, I lost track of the ball at one point there. I thought that Brewster had made a save and had control of it. But in the end, it Could comes out to Maddie Torgerson, and she will score and tie this game at five. That was another great move through traffic. These are hard-won goals that William and Mary is scoring. And unbelievable, they have tied this game up. They have played with so much fight, so much want to out on the field. We've seen a very balanced attack by William and Mary, and we have seen great decision making on this run. So the goal by Torgerson, her 15th of the year, senior captain from my neck of the woods, Walpole, Massachusetts. She was a not only a lacrosse player, but a standout hockey player at the St. Mark's School was something that Coach Gratsky talked with us about is she has that hockey player background. So she's another player. She's not afraid of the contact. She's not afraid of the physicality. And that has certainly impacted her game. And she's impactful all over the field in terms of draw controls. Delaware had a 3 nothing lead. Excuse me, a 4 nothing lead. And now this one is all tied at five. Coming up next on LAC Sports Network, it's game two of our CAA women's double header. Elon visiting Towson with both teams looking for a win to help their chances in the race for one of the four spots in the CAA tournament coming up in May. That's coming up next, Elon and Towson CAA game of the week. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore with you here in Williamsburg at the Martin Family Stadium at Albert Daly Field in Williamsburg, Virginia. Again, if you're just joining us, Delaware jumped out to a 4-0 lead about eight minutes in. William & Mary had not yet registered a shot uh, in that time period, but they were able to come back, make it 4-2. Uh, Delaware got one back, but now three straight by the Tribe to tie this game up. And uh, obviously getting a couple more draw control victories has been big, but also just getting into the flow of offense. And we've seen plays like uh, plays made by Maddie Torgerson and uh, by Lauren Russell are not afraid to get inside the eight meters and take some contact and fight through and make some good shots and obviously get some goals on the board. Well, that's exactly right. That's what I was thinking in terms of William and Mary, in terms of the run that they've been making. As, as I said, they have been hard fought goals. They have had to fight through the contact. They have had to keep the ball in their stick and they have had to be really smart about where they place their shots because Kate Brewster, an excellent goalkeeper, you can't just give her high shots day in and day out. And we've seen good placement by the Tribe on this run. And also seven saves by Elsa Rall in goal for the Tribe. William & Mary gets the draw control, so draw controls are almost even now, 6-5 in favor of Delaware. And the Tribe have a chance for lead at number one of this game for them. And you think about what that would mean to this William & Mary team when they were down 4-0 in the opening eight minutes of this contest to be able to take a lead would be big in terms of going into the locker room at halftime in terms of their outlook going into the second half, realizing that they absolutely can defeat this Delaware team 
They just have to play very skilled. They have to be very disciplined. And that's the other word that has been coming to my mind in watching William and Mary on these offensive possessions. In their settled offense, they have been very disciplined. We have not seen them force a lot of things. And it has really paid off in terms of the high quality shots they've been getting. Ahonen swings it off to the right side. Russell drawing a foul. Flag was up. Lauren Russell, who has one of the five goals for William & Mary, 24 on the season. And we'll get another look here at the contact. And she was the player we talked about earlier that certainly doesn't shy away from it. And goes and attacks the goal, and William & Mary has its first lead of the contest, 6-5. to five. Russell's second of the game. By or check that, excuse Kopech. me, it's by Sophie Kopech. I apologize, it's her Russell. second of the game. We've been talking so much about these freshmen. She's only a sophomore, so again, the youth of this William and Mary team as we're gonna get another look here. So this is Russell on the free position opportunity. And once again, just the smart decision going for the higher percentage shot. You see her placement up high going right over top of the goalkeeper and able to gauge it because she was in so close. Again, another great decision, and we're seeing the unselfishness right now of this tribe team. That was almost an exact carbon copy of what we saw from Meredith Hughes to Sophie Kopech a few moments ago. So Kopech now with two goals and 10 on the season. She had 15 goals in her freshman year, making the all-rookie team in the CAA. Draw control for Star Howard. And the Tribe have the ball and the lead for the first time today. This is Olivia Harpel. And so for Delaware right now, they really want to buckle down on the defensive end and play very smart. Try not to give up some of these free position opportunities, but William and Mary has been moving so well with the ball and without the ball. But they're certainly looking for a big defensive stop here because the tribe has been on fire and it's not just been one player. When you think about the balance and the diversity that we've seen out on the field so far by William and Mary, they certainly have a couple of players who are key facilitators, but it is a team effort. Good double team. Hughes got cut off there and the ball chopped away, but retrieved, still 35 seconds on the shot clock. Maddie Torgerson, though, had a lane to goal. And Torgerson will have a free position for the Tribe with a chance to put William & Mary up by two. Torgerson, who was an all-rookie performer back in 2016, then missed all of 2017 due to injury. Was able to come back last year. Bouncing it wide, picked up, though, below the goal line by the Tribe. Still 25 seconds to work with. And I think that Delaware was half expecting for her to hand off to Martiri, who was in that same spot that Kopech has been in. Shot clock at 18. Torgerson fires it home. Her second of the game. And William and Mary has now scored five in a row to have a 7-5 lead. This is Russell with possession against such great vision and Torgerson able to get that shot off under pressure. Another nice decision. We once again see Russell who has proven to be a great facilitator on the field today. And you see all the attention that Torgerson was drawing and still able to score the goal. And you have to love the fact right now, again, the shot clock was really running down, but you didn't see any lack of composure by William and Mary. They just had their heads in it. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And again, the unselfishness that we've seen today has been a huge reason for their offense of success and their two goal lead. So Torgerson's second, 16th now in the season. By the way, Lauren Russell, her first two assists of her career coming here back to back for the Tribe. Well, she's gonna have to do more of that because when you establish yourself as a goal scorer, you draw a lot of defensive attention. So when you draw all those defenders to you, you have to be able to feed your teammates and we're seeing Lauren Russell able to do that today. High Scott got the draw control win. William and Mary, if you watched the first 10 minutes of this game and then tuned out and now tuning back in, you'd be very surprised probably to see what the score is. Going on a 7-1 run since that point. 
This is Russell, three points now, a goal and two assists to lead the way. And it really boils down to two things right now for William and Mary. It boils down to a goalkeeper who has really stepped up and played very big back in net for William and Mary. And then it comes down to the offensive balance and unselfishness and smart decision making that we've seen on the offensive end. Martiri flips it back out. Mahonen swinging it off to Russell. Russell will dodge from the right side, draws the slide, Torgerson looking to dodge and got bumped and fouled. With a minute 41 left in the half, 28 seconds on the shot clock. She got knocked down by Claire D'Antonio. Pushed all the way back outside the 12 meters here. Shot clock at 28. So William and Mary has time. Looking to put a sixth straight goal on the board here and build their lead to three. Down low, double coming from the backside. It was Shante Sims. I think the pressure was felt. It leads to a bad pass and now a battle for the ball along the near side. Now the possession clock is not reset, so it's winding down to two, to one, and to zero. So Delaware should just get the ball here, and they will. Exactly. For Delaware, all they needed to do was just keep competing and not let... William and Mary get the ball back, and they were so far away from their goal. And now Delaware unsettled. What a great save by Rawl with her foot denying De Ruggiero. So Delaware, in the midst of a little bit of the craziness, got De Ruggiero out in front of everybody. It was one on one with Rawl, and she makes save number nine of the contest for her. Again, that's an easy goal for a lot of people, but Wall today is playing so well out on the field. We did talk with Coach Fratsky about her, and she talked a lot about her style, how she doesn't dance around. She's very composed, very solid, just keeps her eyes on the ball, and she moves her hands so quickly, which is what we saw on that last stop. Possession clock off. William Mary can hold for the final shot of the half. And Russell didn't get a clean shot off. Good defense by Delaware. 12 seconds left. Chance for a final shot now for the Blue Hens. Moving in transition. The pass was high over the head of Christine Long. And the time will expire the here in the first half. half. But quite the turnaround there from William and Mary after being down 4 nothing, eight minutes in. You have to give the Tribe so much credit in the way that they're playing, the way that they were able to keep their heads in this contest. They didn't get down. Instead, they went back to basics, the fundamentals, exactly what they needed to do. They worked the ball around. They've been patient on offense, getting good shot selection. And again, when your goalkeeper is playing the way that Elsa Wall is playing, good things are going to happen. So our score at halftime, William & Mary 7, Delaware 5. We'll be back in a few minutes for the second half, but, for, but first for an update on everything that's happening here in college lacrosse on this Friday evening, we send you back to the LSN Broadcast Center. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore back with you. CAA Game of the Week, William & Mary 7, Delaware 5. Getting ready for the start of the second half, and Monica again, Delaware got off to the 4-0 start. William & Mary did not register a shot through the first 10 minutes, and obviously were to drastically able to turn it around. And one of the things we pointed out, though, was a key was the play of their goalie, Elsa Rall. She's been great back in goal. She's seeing the ball extremely well. She already has eight saves in this contest, and some of those were really good shots, including that point-blank range shot that she stopped earlier, which was extremely impressive. But the other thing that you have to say for William & Mary right now, they're shooting 70%. They have seven goals off of 10 shots in this contest. That is phenomenal in terms of the accuracy that we're seeing out of the Tribe. Tribe being led by Sophie Kopech. Two goals and an assist. Lauren Russell, a goal and two assists. Bell Martiri also has a pair of goals. For Delaware, uh, five goals scored by five different players. Sarah Bedard, Caroline Farley, Christine Long, Sydney Rousa, and Mia DiRiggiero. And I think that if you had told Hillary Fratsky that her team would have 11 turnovers in the first half to Delaware's five, and that her team would be up by two. She would be surprised. But again, it's the efficiency on the offensive end that has really paid off. When the Tribe has had their opportunities, they have certainly made the best use of them. 
That's one of the stat categories. William Mary has been at the top of the conference in 42% shooting percentage, his third best in the conference. Conversely, Delaware, 38%. That's second worst. Well, and I talk to lacrosse coaches all the time, and that's one of the big keys that they always talk to me about is taking advantage of your opportunities, especially if you're a team that is not leading in draw controls on the season versus your opponents or in other statistical categories. If you can take advantage on your shots, you're going to be successful. Brewster able to smother that one in the crease. And now Delaware in possession for the first time here in the second half. Six and six on the year. 0-1-1 to begin conference play with a 10-3 loss against JMU last Friday. They will play in North Carolina on Sunday. They'll play at Elon. While William and Mary will travel up the road and take on Towson for their game Sunday. And of course, coming up next, game two of our doubleheader featuring Elon and Towson here on Lax Sports Network as Sarah Bedard gets tripped up and fouled by Ann McElligan. One again, this is a Delaware team that has a lot of talent on the offensive end of the field. They had 15 shots in the first half and were able to score five goals off of those 15 shots. And a nice check there for William and Mary. That's number 34, Hannah Ryan. That was a good re-dodge there by DiRuggiero, but you point out the play by Ryan. She came into the day with nine cause turnovers, senior from Glenn Gardner, New Jersey. Maybe a bit of a split household because her father, Mark, played football at Delaware. Although I'm sure he'd be rooting for yeah. William and Mary in this one. When you one. become a parent, I think <laughs> it's, you're always cheering for your child's team. Well, Shante Sims diving to the ground to make sure her team gets that ball. IWLCA Mid-Atlantic second teamer last year. CAA second team last year as well. and Second in the league in ground balls per game and third in cause turnovers. She truly is a special player and she already has her future all mapped up. Coach Linville was telling us that she's already knows she's going to Maryland Law School. Shot by Farley and it went by the goalie Rawl. She did not make a touch on it, did not, did not make a save and then William and Mary did have closest to the ball along the end line so the Tribe get it. And so now William and Mary in the different situation. Now they've got the two goal lead. They were playing from behind for a lot of that first half. But now we have to see if they're able to hang on and continue to make these smart decisions when they can taste it. They have really competed with Delaware for the majority of this contest. It was a slow start for the tribe, but they have gotten back into this contest. And so sometimes when you know you're so close, it starts to get in your head. And so the mental game right now is gonna be just as important for William and Mary as anything that they're doing in terms of skills. William and Mary was in position to beat Drexel in their last game, had a two goal lead with 10 minutes left, leading that game 13 to 11, but Drexel scored the final four goals of the game to get the victory. Russell navigating her way through and draws a foul. And again, the William and Mary record a little deceptive because they've lost those last three games by three or less goals. It's once again, you just see Russell not afraid, working through three defenders, able to keep hold of the ball, not to let it get checked loose. And that shot just a little high, but backed up by the Tribe. Russell with three points on the day, one of two Tribe players with three points. That was just a tough catch right there for Mackenzie Schultz. So right here for Delaware, they've gotten the defensive stop, and now they have to make something happen offensively. We talked about the fact they got off to the game with four different goal scorers, lots of different people, cap people capable on the offensive end of the field. Delaware trying to get back within one, looking for the first goal of the second half. Farley stopped by Rawl. Again, she's just seeing the ball so well. She has been the X factor in today's contest. She has denied a lot of these Delaware shots. And to me right now, she's the player of the game for the Tribe. And a 
timeout called by William and Mary with 24:56 left in the second half. Neither team has scored here in the second half. Usually William and Mary holding on, on to a 7-5 lead here in our CAA game of the week. First end of a double header. Again, coming up next, we got Elon and Towson. And of course, Wednesday nights on LAC Sports Network at CAA Press Pass. We will bring you all the latest news and notes from around the conference and prepare you for the biggest games of the week. CAA Press Pass on LAC Sports Network every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. As you look inside the William & Mary huddle, we talked about Hillary Fratsky, her sixth year as the head coach. And I think right now the message to the team would have to be something along the lines of, at least figuratively, you have to keep your foot on the gas pedal. They were doing so many good things to close out that first half. And right now, while they have the momentum, while they have this two goal lead, they need to continue to try to stretch this lead out. They know that Delaware is such a good team. They know there's gonna be a huge comeback from the Blue Hens. And so every offensive opportunity matters. And we talked about how much they valued those offensive opportunities in the first half. They really took advantage. I mean, shooting 70% and a half is just outstanding. And so for William and Mary, that's exactly what they need to do right now. And one of the reasons that that shooting percentage was so high was because they worked the ball around so well, they spotted their teammates, they worked together as a unit, and they got those high percentage shots. Now for Delaware, on the other hand, they have not had the momentum since about the 22 or 21 minutes remaining mark of the first half. So right now, they're back on their heels a bit, and the way to get things ignited is another huge defensive stop. Delaware led 20, uh, led 4 0 with 22 57 left to go in the first half. William and Mary scored its first goal in 18 07. Lauren Russell made it 4 1. William and Mary got to within 2 4 2 before Delaware made it 5 2. So the last goal for the Blue Hens came with 12 58 remaining in the first half. So you're looking at about an 18 minute drought offensively and Elsa Rall, one of the big reasons why she has made nine saves today, topping the seven she had Sunday against Drexel. Of course mentioned earlier the 20, she had in a victory this year over Davidson, which was a one goal, nine eight victory for the tribe. And again, she's just so disciplined back in the net sees the ball so well, doesn't jump around as we talked about, and it has really paid off for her today. This has definitely been a great effort out of the junior. Here's Russell. Flipping it off to the far side, Martiri. Drew a bit of a double. Delaware plays normally in a zone defensively and trying to cause a turnover here. They're 21st in the country in doing so. Martiri did such a nice job getting to the ball, just knowing where the ball is at all times so that she could quickly come over and save possession for her team. Delaware forces almost 11 turnovers per game. 21st in the nation. It's second in the CAA. This is going to... Going to Delaware. Go to Delaware. They will get the turnover from William and Mary. It's a great hustle and a great effort to try to save possession, but Delaware has gotten that defensive stop that they were looking for, and now they have to find a way to get past Elsa Rawl. This is good pressure from William and Mary. Sydney Rouser with it out top, along with Danica Schweck. Schweck playing in her eighth game, freshman season. And now a race for the ball near midfield with Howard. It'll be William & Mary possession. And once again, Star Howard just making a hustle play. One thing that Coach Fratsky told us about Howard is that she's always watching the ball. But we've seen her do this twice now where she's been a little sloppy when she's worked the ball up the field. So certainly something she can look to improve upon but you have to love the fact that she is always in the game mentally paying attention to where the ball is and trying to get to it. So Delaware still in search of that first goal since there were about 12 minutes left in the first half. Look up at the scoreboard and see that they're only down by two, so the sky certainly isn't falling in on them right now. They are very much in this game, but at one point had a 4-0 and then a 5-2 lead. 
And Christine Wong, one of their big goal scorers, has been a little quiet. She scored in the contest, but of course, coming into this game, 37 goals on the year. She's certainly a player. Di Ruggiero with a nice feed and the finish for the Blue Hens. And they get that goal finally. Caroline Farley, her second of the game, 19th of the season. And it's back to a one goal lead. And that's more of what we're used to seeing from Mia Di Ruggiero. She's the quarterback on this squad. That's the role that she likes. And that was a great cut and a nice finish by Farley, but this is all created by Di Ruggiero. Able to spot her teammate. Nice movement down the middle, but that is why Mia Di Ruggiero is so important to this Delaware team. She was preseason all CAA. She's so fast. She has such great vision, but of course you need teammates that can finish, and Caroline Farley certainly can do that. So Caroline Farley will take the draw here. and She explained how what her way of on the draw circle is she goes for the push draw normally with her feet facing the op the opponent's goalie she'll typically try to push it forward or get the ball back to the left side for a self for herself to grab it so she likes to win it to herself when possible win it with her right hand if she can but not able to do it right there it hasn't worked out as much for her today it's been more important having those players on the circle and working well with them as a draw control unit But she certainly is an impressive player, and her work ethic is something that really stands out to me. It's certainly a reason she's been so successful and is a senior on this Delaware team and one of the speaking captains on this Delaware team. She's such a good role model for the younger players because she's always wanting to learn, always wanting to get, to get better, even as a senior, realizing she doesn't know everything, and she can always do things to improve her game. Eight minutes gone by in the second half. Only goal of the half has come from Delaware. As the Tribe led 7-5 at the break. Is Grace Ahonen. Now Maddie Torgerson who scored two goals in the first half. Ahonen has a bit of a lane against that zone, but it closes up pretty quickly. That was good defense by Maggie McCarthy. Locked down to 28 seconds. Still time to work with Martiri. Dodging, splitting, and then lost control of it. Draws the foul, though. And I'll have a free position. 21 seconds on the shot clock here for William and Mary. And of course, the issue with Martiri is you never know what she's going to do, whether she's going to pass, whether she's going to look to go inside. She's got several players camped out over on that right side, and we have seen William and Mary execute to those players numerous times. Looked like she was trying to pass that to a cutter and just slipped out from her cross. I agree, a little unlucky there for Martiri. And now the Blue Hens moving in transition. So now Delaware will slow things down and set up their offense and a chance to tie the game up. Here in the early stages of the second half. Blue Hens had their three game winning streak snapped with the opening conference game and the loss to James Madison last Friday. Trying to get back on the winning track. Good whip shot there by Bedard to tie it up at seven. She's one of the lefties on this Delaware team. So it gives Delaware another look offensively. And she has a hard nose for the cage. And this was a big goal for the junior out of Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. Again, you see her in that left hand. That was a hard shot. Great finish for Delaware. For the Blue Hens, the only two goals of the half, and we are back to square one now, 7-7 with 20-53 left to go. And that was a great goal for Sarah Bedard, but one of the things that Coach Linville talked to us about, about Bedard, which I think is some of the highest praise that you can receive from your head coach, she was talking about how Bedard can always see the best in her teammates. She's a great team player, and even when her team's down, she can have that positive outlook. And of course, no surprise that she's the player that evens things up seven all. So second of the day, 19th of the season for the junior from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. Born in Toronto, dual citizen. And a huge draw control win right there for Delaware. Now they have taken the momentum back. They have evened things up and they are hungry to retake the lead as Caroline Farley is gonna come back out on the field. Claire D'Antonio able to pick it up 
And here are the Blue Hens, a chance to, as mentioned, get that lead back. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore with you here, William and Mary. CAA Game of the Week on LAC Sports Network. And again, coming up next, Elon and Towson in game two of our women's doubleheader. Then tomorrow, we'll have a men's doubleheader. So don't forget that as well. UMass taking on Towson and Hofstra against Delaware. Our men's CAA doubleheader tomorrow here on LAC Sports Network. Already down to really the, the crunch time part of the season. Shot wide. Backed up though, Delaware quickly trying to re-attack. DiRuggiero gets a step on the defender, Ryan. Flips it across the crease wide, but a foul. Yep, and Rawl did not get a piece of that, so the shot clock has not reset. 34 seconds on the clock for Delaware as we're gonna get a look here at DiRuggiero. Trying once again to use that great vision to find a teammate. She was trying to get the pass to Farley. Farley the one fouled in a good position on a free position here. And gives Delaware the lead back. Eight to seven. Farley has a hat trick in her 20th goal of the season. Power goals and by once Karen again, McCoy. we've talked a lot about it in this contest, but it has been one of the biggest factors is taking advantage of opportunities. And that was a great opportunity for Caroline Farley on the free position shot and she was able to get the goal for Delaware. And now after being down by two, Farley helps her team get back out on top again. Farley's 49th goal of her career. Today is her 54th game, senior from Medford, New Jersey. Had 10 goals last year and 43 draw controls. This year, 20 goals, and she's well over 60 draw controls on the season now. I mean, you really can't overstate her importance to this Delaware team. Everything she does out on the field, she's already been CAA Player of the Week earlier in the month, and we are certainly seeing why. And Howard, once again, showing why she has been so successful in terms of winning draw controls on the year so far. Star's father, Jawan Howard, of course, of the Fab Five at Michigan and then a very long NBA career. Freshman from Rockville, Maryland. As we talked about, she is only gonna get better and better. It's just scary. I mean, when you think about the numbers she's already put up in terms of the draw control wins, and there's a lot more season left to be played for her to try to extend out that single season record. But you have to imagine she's gonna be competing with herself throughout her career to break it again and again. For William and Mary, this is almost a must-win game if they have eyes towards getting into that top four, making the CAA tournament already 0-2. So to fall to 0-3, you basically need to win out the rest of the way. Your final three home, three final three games to even have a chance. Shantae Sims doing what she does so well. If you're Delaware, you could be looking at it kind of the same way as well. You don't want to fall to 0-2 early on in the conference season and then have another road game Sunday at Elon. Of course, Delaware has already got JMU in the rearview mirror, a loss, but they've already matched up with them. And Delaware picked to be fifth in the league this year after back to back trips to the semi final round the last two years. And William and Mary has lost seven straight games against Delaware and has not won a CAA conference game since 2016. And Rawl, I think, got a piece of it, but it won't matter because there's a foul. And that was facilitated again by DiRuggiero. And once again, Farley the one cutting. So you can see they certainly have a two-player game working. The junior DiRuggiero and the senior Farley. And Farley will look for a second straight free position tally. And it could be a fourth straight goal for Delaware. And it is bounced in by Farley, her fourth of the game. What a day it has been for Delaware Caroline goal. Farley in terms of finishing. Caroline She's Farley. been a big part of this run. And as you said, it's really been the tandem of Caroline Farley and Mia DiRuggiero just being able to connect and then being able to finish. And those are two upperclassmen. You have a junior in DiRuggiero and, of course, a senior 
and Caroline Farley really stepping up. And again, we've seen her finish on these free position opportunities. She has done it twice in a row for Delaware, and you have to be able to do that in those clutch moments. And now it's Delaware back up by two. Mentioned Farley had a four goal game against Oregon. That was back on March 27th, along with 10 draw controls in that game. So that got her CAA Player of the Week honors. And now with the four goals today. Well, when you're a senior, you certainly want to step up and have those games where you are an impact player. And she is certainly doing that today. Of course, she's out of Shawnee, had a great career there. And one thing that Katerie Linville emphasized to us is a, not, a lot of her players having a lot of good lacrosse mentors throughout their careers and that being a difference maker in terms of their progression and their development. And Caroline Farley was one of the ones that she mentioned in terms of that. Wide open in front, counted for Mackenzie Schultz. And William and Mary quickly able to get one back, a big one to make it nine to eight. Just the second goal of the season for the junior from Elkridge, Maryland. And again, it's another great find. Harpel able to find Schultz. Schultz right in the middle, and that's an impossible shot to stop right there. But again, you have to give a lot of credit to Olivia Harpel, one of the seniors on this William & Mary team, for setting that up, and then a nice finish by the junior, Schultz. Still a lot of time left. William & Mary's first goal of the second half after Delaware had scored the first four. You can see Schultz getting congratulated for her second goal of the season, second of her career. Did not score last year. You see everybody lining up on the same side of the circle. You've got all four players in generally the same area for this draw. As we talked about, not a lot of self draws in this contest, and Howard so dominant. But this Scott's where she's gotten in trouble as she gets the ball checked loose a couple of times. This time she's fouled, but we've seen her get in trouble Gonna clearing the ball. Give some credit to Claire High Scott as well, able to angle, propel that ball right to Howard in the right spot, and then able to reach up and get the draw control win. Yet another for her. And now the Tribe a chance to tie the game back up. Well, it was an important draw control for William and Mary to try to go for back-to-back -back goals. Again, they've gotten some of the momentum back. And Howard just steps up in those big moments. She wins big draw controls. But now William and Mary has to do what they've done so well this game, take advantage of opportunities, look for those quality shots. And again, just the number of assisted shots that we've seen in this game out of both the Tribe and the Blue Hens has been a factor for both of these squads. And that's something both coaches talked to us about was just the unselfishness. Ball down. You see Shante Sim. She's just always in the mix, always fighting so hard. But Schultz coming up with it. They'll have 20 seconds to work with. And so that was a benefit for Delaware. Even though they didn't get the possession, they ran a lot of time off this shot clock. So William and Mary going to have to hurry. Shot high by Schultz. There was some contact, and it's the goalie, Brewster, who was able to win the possession on the end line. That was a great effort by Brewster, and of course, recognizing perhaps that the shot clock was winding down anyway. She's going to go out of goal and try to get that possession for her team. Nice speed by Delaware, just working the ball up the field on the clear to get into their settled offense. Farley working on a four goal game, tying her career high today. Gives to DiRigiro, doubled momentarily. And again, she's been the facilitator. They want the ball in her stick so that she can try to create. So we'll see what she does on this free position. If she takes the shot herself or she hands off to a teammate as we've seen her do so well this half. Looking for her second goal of the game. We're all cutting it off. And she didn't score, but I think that was the right decision for DiRigiero because I think 
that the William and Mary defense thought she was going to pass the ball. So instead, she went for the shot. And even though she didn't score, I think that was the right move. Cleared by William and Mary. But again, you certainly want to be that dual threat who can score the goals or who can set up your teammates. And that certainly is Mia DiRogero. Russell out to Ahonen. Martiri is so good at working around the defense. Fantastic dodge, and it went low for the shot to score her third goal. And once again, we are tied 9-9. So the third time that we've been tied today, 5-5, 7-7. Five, five, seven, seven. And now the Tribe come back after a four-goal Delaware run with two straight. I have been so impressed with her ability to dodge around defenders. She has such great composure, and the word that's come to mind when I've watched her play today is just her presence out on the field. She does not play like a freshman. She plays like a senior already, just in terms of her confidence, the way she moves towards goal, the decision-making. I am very impressed with Martiri. Delaware out shooting William & Mary for the game, 23-15. Seen 10 saves by Elsa Rall in goal for William & Mary, three for Kate Brewster. William & Mary now winning the draw control battle, having won 12 of 19. What a game we have on our hands. Just both of these teams battling so hard. Martiri is going to win the draw control after she just scores a goal. And I was just looking at her stat line coming into this contest and just the numbers in terms of what she has been able to do in terms of ground balls, draw controls, cause turnovers. She's just a complete player. William Mary, though, turns it over. And Shante Sims restarts play in Delaware. We'll turn it right back over to William & Mary. Sophie Kopech is all alone, so she's going to wait for reinforcements. That's a smart decision by Kopech. She does not want to waste this opportunity, realizing her team very fortunate to have just gotten the ball back. William and Mary has not beaten Delaware since 2011. Blue Hens won the matchup last year in Newark, 14-6. Got five goals in that game from Sydney Rousa, who has a goal today. Mia DiRogero had five assists in that game last year. Much different story here today, 9-9 with 13.35 remaining. William & Mary, a lot of talented freshmen infused into the lineup this season, and they have been the team leaders. Speaking of talented freshmen, Ahona, and once again, just doing a great job in traffic, keeping hold of the ball. You're going to see all these defenders coming at Ahonen, and she's just going to work her way right back outside. She's going to protect the ball, protect the possession, and now she's going to get a free position opportunity for the Tribe. Ahonen passes. Ball knocked free. And look at Martiri. Stephanie Aker had a look like a beat on it for Delaware, but Martiri the one to go out, get the ground ball, and keep it with the Tribe. 23 seconds on the possession clock. Russell down GLE, passes out. Ahonen down to 12 seconds to shoot. Trying to get the lead back are the Tribe. Martiri draws the foul with seven on the clock. Again, just the composure. I think the right decision to get the ball over to Martiri. I mean, she's their go-to player in the Davidson game, of course, scoring that goal. And in these situations where the shot clock is winding down, she is so clutch. Did not get the shot she wanted right there. Looked like she bounced it a, a bit shy of the intended spot. Clock running down here, 2-1, and now it stops at 1. They might add two seconds to the clock here. I think it started a hair early, so it might go to 3 here for the Tribe, and that looks like is what the signal is. Still not a lot of time, so William and Mary really going to have to hurry. Yeah. From behind the goal in this situation, you could try, obviously, for a quick stick in front, which could lead to a transition the other way for Delaware. In a 9-9 game, William & Mary might be best to just roll the ball off to the corner and make sure they can get back defensively. See what they do. That's Schultz, who scored a goal just a few minutes ago. Delaware scored the first four goals of the second half to turn a 7-5 deficit. And they still haven't reset the shot clock. 
So a 9-7 lead, and now William & Mary has scored two straight. Yeah, they're... I was one time at a game earlier this year where they didn't have the ability to reset the clock manually, so they had to reset it and then let it run and then stop it at the point. Hopefully that's not the case <laughs> here because we'd be waiting for... And they did reset it to three, so they're able to okay, do it. Okay, there so we go. Instead of us waiting for a minute and 27 <laughs> seconds, they could just do that. I think that was a men's game, actually, so they're getting used to having that uh, the 80-second clock. But as you said, this is really a tough decision for William and Mary in terms of what they want to do on the possession because if they are going to try to get the quick goal, they have to recover on defense. And they were perhaps hoping to get the foul call, I think. And at the very least, the ball gets deflected into the crease for Kate Brewster, so not really transition for Delaware, although they're going to try to obviously up the pace. And this is the second time Isabel Schmidt has been the big player doing the clear down the field. I'm really impressed with her speed. She's a really good athlete, and we have seen that on the past few clears for Delaware. Uh, runs in her family. Both her a couple of sisters, Hannah and Natalie, played at Loyola and Penn State, respectively. And her father, George, an All-American cornerback wow. at Delaware. That is an impressive family tree. D'Antonio got to the middle. Howard was there defensively, and then Rawl grabbing it, but I think the, the defense getting over made sure that shot wasn't as clean as it could have been. Well, I certainly agree there. That was a team effort on the defensive end of the field to make that a more difficult shot for Delaware and a slightly easier save for Elsa Rawl. We remain tied. 11.42 remaining. Delaware led this game 4-0, eight minutes in. William & Mary Fought all the way back, really controlled the final 15 minutes, took a 7-5 lead to the break. Delaware scored the first four goals here of the second half before the Tribe answered with two straight, and that's how we've gotten to this 9-9 score. Nice cut. Torgerson wide. Torgerson was looking for a third tally today. That was a beautiful cut. Just didn't have the exact angle that she wanted on that shot, but she did such a great job moving without the ball, and again, one thing that has stood out both ends of the field, these players doing such a good job finding their teammates and also people making some pretty difficult catches on some of these cuts to try to generate offensive opportunities. Kopech doubled. They call the quick foul, restart. Pass gets through to Harpel. 20 seconds on the possession clock. Torgerson rolling around to the right side. That's nice defense on the ball, but now we're going to get the flag and the whistle. I think they got a shooting space violation there on Delaware. I think it was Isabel Schmidt. Either way, it's a free position for Torgerson. And again, she has been so effective on the day so far. Saved by Brewster. And now a quick outlet to Stephanie Aker. And again, the high shot, some of the easier ones to stop for the goalkeepers. It was a nice stop for Brewster. But she read that very well. It was right into her stick. And Aker, the transfer from Marquette, carries it all the way to the end line, draws a foul on Star Howard, and now continuing with possession and finally gives it to DiRuggiero. DiRuggiero has scored a goal and has also assisted on one in the game. Now with 51 points on the season and 109 in her career. And of course she's assisted on one, but you have to think back to there's at least two where she's gotten the ball, I think, to Farley, who then got free position shots and scored. So you don't get an assist for that. But I don't think the stat line exactly shows how effective and impactful she has been in this contest. Bedard's pass got knocked away, taken by Rawl in the crease. And now William and Mary moves up field. Delaware has gone nine minutes now without scoring. That was after the long drought of about 20 minutes where they did not score a goal. When I was just getting ready to talk about the defense and some of the good stops that we've seen because Delaware has had 
a difficult time scoring through significant droughts of this contest. And of course, you think about William and Mary, it took them until I think you said the 18th minute right. to score in the game. So certainly give some credit to these defenses. We've focused a lot on Elsa Rawl, but really a team effort on both ends of the field defensively. Rawl has 11 saves for the Tribe. Eight of those coming in the first half. And especially a couple when it was 4-0, 5-1 that were very much important at the time to uh, help William & Mary build some momentum and come back and take a 7-5 lead to halftime. And speaking of defense, that was great defense, shutting off Kopech, forcing the ball back outside. And once again, the shot clock winding down. Credit to this Delaware defense because the shot clock has dwindled down on the last few William & Mary possessions. And we've got a timeout called by Delaware with 8.24 to go in the second half. We remain tied at 9 to 9. This was a 7-5 William & Mary lead at the break. Delaware scored the first four of the second half. William & Mary, though, able to tie the ball game back up at 9-9. Well, start your lacrosse Saturdays with LSN College Central on LAC Sports Network. So tomorrow, beginning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, and every week, we'll get you ready for all the biggest games of the weekend from around the country. Don't let your game day begin without checking out LSN College Central only on LAC Sports Network. So interestingly in this contest, William & Mary has 20 turnovers in this game, but yet the score all tied up. Some of the things they're doing really well, they're leading in the draw control circle 13 to seven. We talked about their efficiency on offense. They've been more efficient than the Blue Hens who've had 24 shots in this game. They've only scored nine goals off of those 24 shots. But so right now, you know, it's that dig deep time when things are all tied up. You really have to make sure you're making the most of your offensive opportunities. And on defense, every ground ball matters. Every cause turnover matters. All those little things. This is the type of game where it usually seems to come down to something like that, a ground ball or a cause turnover or one of the, the things that don't get highlighted as much but are so important when you've got a 9-9 to -nine game, less than 10 minutes to go. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore with you here in Williamsburg. These two teams will both be in action Sunday on the road. Delaware will play at Elon, so they'll just continue on down south after today. Meanwhile, the Tribe will go up to the Baltimore area to take on Towson. As you get a look there at William & Mary's remaining schedule, just a couple more games until it is tournament time, the best time of year if you are a lacrosse fan. The CAA Women's Tournament this year will be hosted by James Madison, May the 3rd and the fifth, and you'll be able to find all three games of that tournament right here on LAC Sports Network. You know, Scott, something that, um, as we take a look at And there. the men's tournament will also be on LAC Sports Network May 2nd and May 4th, so on different days. So we'll have no crossover there. You'll be able to watch all the games without any interruption on LSN. So much good lacrosse to look forward to. And again, as you talked about, I mean, it's really every single game matters at this point in terms of looking towards that tournament. A lot on the line for every single team day in and day out. You can't afford to have a game where you're not playing at your absolute best. And again, it's, you know, for these women out on the field, it has to be a full 60 minutes. That's something that coaches preach all the time, but it is absolutely true. So Delaware ball after the timeout. Blue Hens have led by as many as four. It was four nothing. William and Mary's largest lead has just been two. It was seven five in favor of the Tribe at halftime. William and Mary looking to snap not only a three game losing streak, but also win their first conference game since 2016. And I talked about Isabel Schmidt earlier on those clears. That was very impressive by the senior defender out of Malvern, Pennsylvania. She's one of the top defenders on this team. And what a job she has done today on the clears. Delaware has been almost perfect. Elsa Rawl carrying it ahead, getting it to Hannah Ryan. Spins away from Cindy Rousa. Strong ride here by Delaware. Over midfield for Russell. And Trying to snap a three-game losing streak here this season. Get that first conference win since 2016. And also looking for a first win over Delaware since 2011. 
So a lot of, as you talked about earlier, motivation for William and Mary to get this victory today. Try to get to one and two in conference play. And again, I think they've handled the pressure so well, but these are the minutes that really count in this contest. They've done a good job keeping in the game at times. They've done a good job extending out their lead at times. But right now, it is absolutely critical. You have to value your possessions. You don't want any unforced errors. This is Ohonid. 20 seconds on the clock. Once Russell from the top. Once again, this Delaware defense doing a great job. Nope. Making nope. William and Mary run down this clock. No room there for Martiri. Clock winding down to eight. Loose ball with six seconds. And then thrown away by the Tribe. The ball goes out of bounds with one second on the clock. Not going to matter. It's going to be Delaware ball. And so that was not the offensive possession that William and Mary wanted right there. They didn't get any good looks at goal. The defense did a great job forcing them outside. And then they had to up their tempo a little bit once that shot clock started winding down. And so for William and Mary, they'll have to learn from that and try to get more cuts and try to spot their teammates on their next possession. But for Delaware, the story is different. Your defense got a great stop. Now on your offensive end of the field, you have to really take advantage and reward your defenders for the good work they did on the opposite end of the field. Delaware hoping to even its conference record to one and one with a win today. Foul against William and Mary. And Christine Long will have a free position. And again, she's been a little quiet today. So this is an opportunity for Long to step up Second in the conference in goals per game. Second in shots per game. We'll hang on to this off the free position. Still got 45 seconds to work with on the possession clock. And so I imagine her thinking there, there was plenty of time on the shot clock. She realizes how important this opportunity is for her team. She wants to make sure they have the absolute best opportunity. They've got De Ruggiero. Finds the open player, but the save by Rawl. And then Rawl gets the stick out there. and. Wins the ball back for the Tribe. And we're going to get another look right here. And of course, everything starts with Mia Di Ruggiero working along the crease, spotting Farley time and time again. But the goalkeeper, Elsa Rawl, has stepped up for her squad in the big time moments here today. And to me, she is the number one difference maker in this game right now. Well, the in house scoreboard. They have her for 15 saves on the stats in front of us. They have her for 12, so <laughs> a little home cooking on the scoreboard, maybe. Either way, both a good number in a 9-9 game. And William and Mary lucky to hang on to possession right here. Kopech did a nice job able to keep hold of the ball so that her team didn't turn it over. William and Mary 1-4 this year in games decided by three goals or less. Meanwhile, Delaware is three and two in situations like that this year. I mentioned William and Mary's three game losing streak, all three losses by three goals or less. Lost by two to Drexel, by three to Hofstra, and then lost in overtime, of course, by one to Coastal Carolina. So they have been knocking on the door for another victory. Loose ball, big one for one of these teams to come away with, and it's Hughes for William and Mary. 18 to shoot. Martiri face dodge and then gives it up. Getting it back. Shoots and scores. And you have to love that Hughes scored that goal because she was the player that came up with the loose ball to hang on to possession. And once again, you talked about that power shot earlier. There was a lot behind that shot. You're going to see it here on the replay. I mean, she needs business when she takes these shots. And again, a great opportunity for Ooh, Meredith Hughes. And you love to see the player score that had the important play Hughes. on the possession. 18th goal of the season for Hughes. William and Mary back in front, 10-9, with 4.08 remaining. And so the Tribe are starting to probably feel that elusive conference victory in sight right now. Now, of course, for a team that's led by a lot of underclassmen, and namely the freshman Lauren Russell, Bell Martiri, Grace Ohonen, and others, Star Howard, of course, they don't really know about the fact that uh, the team hasn't won a conference game since 2016. I'm sure they know, but they haven't been part of the team that hasn't been able to get the victory. So for them, this is probably just a, 
another game, just the third game of the conference season, and no big deal. Well, and another thing about being a, a freshman is like a lot of the pressure is off in terms of you don't have a lot of that baggage coming into the game of past conference seasons. That's a great draw win right there, though. Kendra Swiser with it. Freshman from another Newark, freshman. Delaware. Nice defense on the ride, or I guess the, the re-defend there for William and Mary. Torgerson from behind bumps Julia Dambly. So Delaware ball, 3.43 remaining. And William and Mary just retook the lead, so it's been a game of runs, that's for sure. Delaware took a 4-0 lead. And then when it was 5-2, the Tribe scored five straight to lead 7-5 at halftime. Delaware scored the first four goals of the second half as Elsa Rall makes save number 14 of the night. The game that she is having is just absolutely unbelievable. The way she's playing back in goal, she's playing with so much confidence. Again, she's seen the ball so well. And again, her quickness with her hands, it has been the storyline today for the Tribe. After the four goal run by Delaware, William and Mary has scored three in a row. A and the Tribe now team. lead 10 to nine with exactly three minutes left to go. Hillary Fratsky uses a timeout here. This is a great timeout call by William and Mary. Her team just coming up with a really emotional play in terms of getting that big stop, being up in this contest. But we've talked about the history here. They have been in these contests. They have let them slip through their fingers. They do not want that result here today. So they have to really value this opportunity. And what we've been seeing on the William & Mary offensive end of the field, Delaware is a great defensive team. We knew that. Everyone knew that coming into this contest. So they've been really pressuring on defense. The shot clock has been winding down. William & Mary has had to force some opportunities. They've had to give up some opportunities just due to the shot clock winding down and so right now for William and Mary they have to get good movement they have to be unselfish as we've seen them be earlier in this contest and really get that high percentage shot opportunity tomorrow on the CAA game of the week it's a men's doubleheader beginning at noon the two preseason favorites UMass and Towson face off then at two it's Hofstra taking on Delaware entering the weekend Towson and Delaware tied for first place in the conference with a perfect 2-0 record so tomorrow is a key day and the fight to host the CAA tournament coming up in May. It's the CAA Game of the Week men's doubleheader tomorrow, only here on LAC Sports Network. And, of course, coming up next, game two of our women's doubleheader here on this Friday night, Elon at Towson. And then after that game wraps up, make sure to keep it locked to LSN for lacrosse now, which comes your way each and every night, 9 p.m. Eastern, on LAC Sports Network. It's you all the lacrosse news you could ever hope for every night of the week right here on LSN. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore with you. Great CAA battle between these two teams and really seeing, you know, these are two teams picked to, picked to be, and I put I say picked and I put quotes up, people can't see me doing that, but picked to be fifth and seventh in the conference. So out of the top four, out of the CAA tournament, but I think you're seeing that there's there's very good talent, obviously, on these two teams and having a, a fantastic affair here tonight. Well, absolutely. As we've talked about, well, William and Mary, they have 11 freshmen on their roster. So a lot of people just did not know what talent Hillary Fratsky had coming into this program. And we have seen that on display today. And then for Delaware, they have such great leadership. They have some strong seniors in that program, like Caroline Farley. She's a player that has extremely impressed me today, a player like Mia DiRuggiero, what she's been able to do. It's been those two players, and you have to to imagine Del if and when Delaware gets the ball back because that's the beauty of the shot clock. You can no longer now hold the ball. William and Mary. Thank goodness. Absolutely. It makes <laughs> it a lot more exciting for people like you and me. So when Delaware gets the ball back, you have to imagine that DiRuggiero and Farley are going to be a big part of that possession to try to get another goal. Lauren Russell in possession of it right now. El Martiri has led the way with three goals. Sophie Kopeck has scored a pair. Maddie Torgerson a pair for William and Mary. And then Caroline Farley, a four-goal night for Delaware. Sarah Bedard has also scored two. 
Plenty of time on the possession clock. It's at 40 right now. You see Delaware obviously has uh, up their defensive pressure in the final two and a half minutes here, down by one. Yep, stretching that zone out high, really pressuring, having the double teams coming. Delaware, one of the best teams in the country at causing turnovers, 21st in the nation. They don't get a cause turnover. Instead, they give up a goal, a huge one, to get William and Mary back up by two. And that's Martiri. That's like, her fourth. Yeah, she has been such a factor, but we talked about it. Those assisted goals, setting up their teammates, and you're going to get another great look here because that's Kopech drawing the attention. That was a great catch by Martiri, by the way, in traffic. And then the finish. You never know what Bell Martiri is going to do offensively with the ball. That placement, once again, low to high pass. By the yeah, freshman. Again, the composure, the stick skills, the lacrosse IQ that we are seeing out of Bell Martiri. Now Delaware really would love to get a draw control win. You see Martiri, her fourth goal today, 35. Now her freshman season came in averaging 2.82 a game, which is third in the conference. Delaware does get the draw control win. They're ninth of the game. William & Mary has won 13. Millwood's doing a great job. Or sorry, not Millwood, Schweitzer, who has won two big draws for Delaware in recent memory. Got a foul on William and Mary. The tribe thought they had a potentially a clean takeaway. Blue Hens now chasing two with a minute 45 left. And you have Farley trying to get open. Tried, the Tribe trying to snap a seven-game losing streak against Delaware. There's very rough contact up high, and then Howard's going to get called. D'Antonio gets back up on her feet pretty quickly. We'll get another look here. And it's going to be a card. Yep. And so this is a big call right here because Howard is going to head off the field. It's a two-minute penalty. Man up situation here for Delaware, down by two. And this is the center hash mark for D'Antonio, the most favorable spot on these free position opportunities. And you have to imagine she's going to head straight to goal. But of course, that's what the defense is thinking too. Junior has started every game this season. She scored 15 goals, one for seven on free positions and after a little bit of navigating inside the eight got to her right got her hands free and she scores to make it 11 10 with a minute 28 to go and i really like what she did there because again it's a man up situation for her team but they're two down se two seconds to to do it down by two goals so she knew she had did not take a lot of time off this clock, but she needed to try to get a high percentage shot, a good look at goal, and that's exactly what she did. She didn't waste any time. She was able to finish, and now her team, if they can win this draw control, can look to get the equalizer. So Star Howard released after just serving uh, two seconds of the penalty with the goal by D'Antonio. 16th of her season. And now the all-important draw control ready. Schweizer had it momentarily, and then it's Howard comes out of the pack with it for William and Mary. And you have to imagine in Howard's mind, she got that yellow card, she was out, it was a man up situation, and she was going to be somewhere on the next play in order to do something good for her team. That's just her mentality. And the possession clock is not in play right now. It reads 70 seconds right now, and of course, we're at 63 seconds left in regulation, so possession clock is off. And it is very important right now for Delaware. We got a stoppage. So Schweitzer was heading off the field. Now she's heading back on. Of course, she's done a great job on these draw controls. But this is Meredith Hughes navigating through traffic. Let's see. I think she thought she was going to get a card for that little bit of contact. But instead, just a run-of-the-mill foul was called. And right now, Delaware has to have all-out defense on the field, trying to get a double team. Did she step out of bounds? She did. She did. Turned over by William and Mary with 38 seconds left. And Delaware, a chance for the tying goal. 
And that is how she has gotten in trouble time and time again. She's been forced over to the sideline. She's been double teamed. That's Blue Hens really try to force overtime potentially. That's been the one blemish on her game today that I have seen. Timeout, Delaware, once they get the ball over the restraining line with 23.6 seconds left, 11-10, William & Mary, and exactly what you draw up for the CAA Game of the Week here on LAC Sports Network, coming down a one-goal game with 23.6 seconds left. So let's take a look again at what was the important play here with Howard, and we'll see if we can see her step out. Yep. Very clearly on the line there. Clearly so there. It was very close. That's going to be a tough pill for William and Mary to swallow, but it was the right call. Well, I guess the question could have been, I wasn't looking at where the ball was, and maybe she had gotten rid of the ball before she had stepped out of bounds. It's a fair, but, but we were looking at her feet. Looking at her feet, Very right. focused. Not sure if we can run that, that back and maybe check again and see if there was any argument to be made. Oh. 20, they put the clock to 24.1 seconds now, by the way, so a little bit of time added. Still has it, still has it. Mm. It's, it's a tough call, as you see right there. It looks there. like it still has a little still bit of within contact her, yeah. within her cross, hasn't cleared it completely. And that's that's a super tough call, and I think the right call in the end, especially in live action. I mean, I think that's right. I mean, I yeah. think that that was the call to make. As we keep looking at it on the replay, you just see how close of a call right. it was. These officials have really done a great job out on the field today, and again, I think we are in complete agreement with them. But that that really was almost a 50-50 call right there. So they added a, a half second to the clock. So could be important we'll see 24.1 seconds left i think nope. from delaware's perspective every little bit helps they're very happy to have any additional time looking at elsa rawl a moment ago i thought i had her for about 14 saves they have her on the stat monitor at 12 they have her on the board in the field on the field the scoreboard at 16 so i'll say she's got 14 cut the difference and regardless what the number is you can't take away from what she's done out on the field Delaware trying to tie it De Ruggiero does the job what a goal and again that is what the beauty of being known as a passer is because people thinking she was looking for a cutter but instead she can take the ball inside just roll around the crease and put the ball in the back of the net this is so well executed she got just a little step ahead of her defender she had that little bit of daylight and again everyone thinking she's gonna pass but instead she goes straight to goal what a play by Mia Di Ruggiero well, this one not over yet, though. 12.7 seconds left. Dirigero second of the game, 12th of the season. And time for a team to win the draw control and move quickly in transition, try to win this game in regulation. Will it be Delaware's eighth straight win over William & Mary? Or will the Tribe pick up their first conference win in three years? They might need overtime to settle it. It's a loose ball. And it's going to be awarded to Delaware, a loose ball push. Here come the Blue Hens with five seconds left. De Ruggiero, a pass ahead, got one second. Rousa will not get a shot off. And we head to overtime here in Williamsburg. It seems fitting with the way this game mostly went, at, you know, after Delaware got that 4-0 start. Once William and Mary found themselves, got to a 7-5 lead at halftime. Uh, it's been pretty close since that point, obviously. And uh, overtime, probably a good way to settle this one. I think that's exactly right. Neither team willing to back down, stepping up when they need to. That was such a clutch play by Mia Di Ruggiero to tie things up. And again, what she has done really in the entirety of the second half, finding her teammates, feeding Farley. You don't see it in her stat line, but she is partly responsible for several of those goals that, that Caroline Farley has scored. And then to get the equalizer with time running down, ice water in her veins. I am so impressed with the junior. We're gonna so. get another look right here. Again, you see her working around. She had her head up. She was looking for teammates and William and Mary, perhaps not expecting that she was gonna take that shot. That was a great finish by Di Ruggiero. This will be Delaware's second trip to overtime this season. They lost their one overtime game. That was against Rutgers, 12-11. William & Mary has been to overtime twice. A 
victory over Davidson 9-8 and a loss against Coastal Carolina 12-11. So for those that may not remember the overtime rules, it is sudden victory, but you play three minute I always intervals. Get, I get inter three minute interview, three minute intervals, but there's two intervals within an overtime period. So you play Correct. three minutes of overtime one, switch sides, play three more minutes. And then after that is when you move to overtime number two. Your second and overtime. That's just for record keeping sake. But again, a goal can be scored in the first 20 seconds and that's all that would matter. So first team to score will win this one between Delaware and William and Mary. Here's the overtime coming up in a couple of minutes gives you gives us time to remind you that game two of our double header here on Lax Sports Network coming up Elon and Towson see Elon one and one to begin the conference season Towson at O and one as uh, well things heat up here in April looking towards May and towards the CAA tournament and then again after all the game coverage today keep it locked to LSN for lacrosse now at 9 p.m. Eastern, scheduled for 9 p.m. Eastern. Probably once uh, that game wraps up tonight, you'll have lacrosse now uh, live from the LSN Broadcast Center. With uh, You'll have highlights from these games and all the other action across lacrosse. We'll have some interviews uh, for you from both games and some analysis uh, from in-studio as well here on LSN. Scott Sudikoff, Monica Moore with you in Williamsburg, Virginia. And to recap how this one has gone down, Delaware got out to a 4-0 lead. They were dominating. They had outshot William & Mary for the first eight minutes of the game, 8-0, and led 4-0 seven minutes and three seconds into the game. It took William & Mary until the 18.07 mark to make it 4-1. Delaware had a 5-2 lead with 12.58 left to go in the first half, and then that's when the try went on the run to end the half, scoring five straight took the lead 7-5 into the break. And then we've seen just runs really since that. Delaware, four in a row. William & Mary, four in a row. And then Delaware, two in a row to tie it at 11. And the final goal coming from Mia Di Ruggiero uh, with 12 seconds to send us to overtime. Neither team willing to back down. Both teams stepping up in big moments for their team. And again, if you don't think every single game matters at this point in CAA play, let this game be an example because these two teams are playing like this is for the conference championship and that's what you have to do during the conference season. So we'll see who wins this draw control because as you said, we could have a goal score in the first 20 seconds of overtime the way that these two teams are playing. So this is a critical draw control coming up for both of these two squads. Saw Elsa Rawl in goal. They officially have her for 12 saves. I unofficially have her for 14. And uh, Kate Brewster for Delaware and this has been uh, credited with four saves. You have two freshmen in the draw control circle taking this critical overtime draw. And of course, we've seen them throughout this game. But I think that just really tells you about the youth of these two squads and how it doesn't matter if you're a senior or a freshman. And that's actually something that Coach Fratsky talked with us about. That's the mentality on her team is that the seniors don't think about the underclassmen as freshmen and they want them to play as well as they possibly can. They're not worried about getting beat out of their spots or anything like that. It's literally wanting to help these freshmen be the best that they can. And so you see the youngsters in the draw circle Kendra Schweizer on her on the left. Her sisters Courtney, Taryn, and Haley all playing collegiately at Johns Hopkins, Monmouth, and Hopkins, respectively. And Haley Schweizer, some time at the professional ranks as well. And then Claire High Scott for William and Mary, the freshman from Falls Church, Virginia. And in the end, it's De Ruggiero who scoops up the loose ball. Delaware will have the first crack at winning this contest. And it seems almost fitting that De Ruggiero would be the player for Delaware that would come up with it after she scored that clutch goal to send us to overtime. And you have to imagine she's going to be pretty involved on this play because, again, she's the quarterback on this team. We've talked about it time and time again, but she is so important in terms of facilitating, in terms of whatever her team is doing, even when she doesn't have the ball. Here she is right now. Just looking, surveying her opportunity, seeing if anyone's open, and she's going to draw the foul. Knocked down on the she's side of the crease. A card. a card. So an advantage coming up here for Delaware. Yep, a hit to the head. 
So Di Ruggiero, we talked about it. She's so critical, but there's the hit to the head right there. That's a must call. It's one of the biggest points of emphasis in women's lacrosse. It's the right call. And so into the penalty box is Hannah Ryan. So Di Ruggiero, not really in a good scoring position, but maybe in a very good feeding position. If Delaware can run a cutter to the crease, Sydney Rouse is at the top right now. And time stopped. I think the penalty time is not where it needs to be. So they'll just uh, make sure that the penalty time for Hannah Ryan is at the, at the right spot. We might have a reset of the clock as well to a certain time. I'm at 42 listed right now. And a free position coming off the side for Di Ruggiero. Clock gets reset all the way to 2.07 as it kept running at some point there. I didn't even catch it. And then the penalty time reads a minute 44, which we can guess is not right. Delaware hoping that it won't really matter. That maybe in a couple of moments here they'll have the game-winning goal. They pick up their first conference win of the season in a back-and-forth battle with the Tribe. Well, again, Di Ruggiero is the player you would want to have the ball in her hands. She's waiting. The junior from Baltimore will trigger things for the Blue Hens. Christine Long is the closest to her. You see her immediately just look to reset up this offense. Again, there's a fresh shot clock. They're in their man up offense. So I think that was a great decision by the junior who has made great decisions day in and day out all season long. And see again, they're gonna get the ball right back to her from behind the goal. De Ruggiero goes back below GLE being watched by Beth Kirk. Now they'll switch. A couple of runners through, Farley and Long. Back to De Ruggiero. In the middle, Long, bounce, saved by Rawl. Farley trying to sweep up the rebound for Delaware, and she will eventually. And what a stop by Elsa Rawl. A clutch save for a goalkeeper. And De Ruggiero was very close to stepping on the end line there. And that would have been a tough break for the Blue Hens, but again, they're a man up right now. Hannah Ryan is in the penalty box. And they have some time. Sarah Bedard draws the foul. And also away from the ball, saw Di Ruggiero go down, and she seems to be okay. And now Sarah Bedard with the free position opportunity. Two goals today for the junior from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. And again, she decided not to go to cage, but again, to set something up in this man up offense, and she'll draw another call. Remember the lefty, one of the natural lefties on this Delaware team. And at 50 seconds left of penalty time, Bedard from the same spot that she just passed out of a moment ago. This time gonna shoot. Rawl with a second gigantic save in this man down situation for the Tribe. And now with 40 seconds left in the penalty, as long as the Tribe can keep possession of it, play keep away, they'll be able to get back to full strength and probably send us into that second three minute portion of our first overtime. And that's perhaps, I mean, obviously it's, it's golden goal, so her making that save was very critical, but also the chance here for William and Mary. Little now transition. Man down. Materi will shoot it and score, and William and Mary wins in overtime. An underhanded goal <laughs> as they were in their man down. They were a man down, and Mark Terry, who has been the hero on offense several Mark times here today, she's the clutch player. You go back to that Davidson game. What a goal and what a celebration you are about to see out of the tribe. Fifth goal today for Bell Materi. It snaps not only a three game losing streak this season. It snaps a seven-game losing streak against Delaware, and it's William & Mary's first conference victory since 2016. They do it with a player off for a penalty, down one, going in transition after Rawl had made two huge saves, and they win it.
this is a fantastic goal. It is impossible to pick a player of the game because, yes, Materi just scored the game winner, but they would not have had that shot if Elsa Rawl had not made two critical stops. Take another look at this clutch shot. And again, doing it in transition was the way to go since they were a man down. Materi taking advantage. We've seen her do it all game long. You never know what she's going to do. That's a part of her game that makes her so special. Her ability to finish, we've seen it time and time again, a five-goal effort against a very good Delaware team. And William and Mary, a little momentum here going into the rest of the CAA season. So a fantastic win for the Tribe in overtime. They even up their overall record to 6-6 six and, six and pick up their initial conference victory of the year. Now one and two, Delaware falls to six and seven overall. And now in a tough spot, 0 and two to begin the conference season. And you can see the emotion for the Tribe getting that first conference victory in three years. So once again, our final score from Williamsburg. William & Mary 12, Delaware 11. The final comes in overtime. For Monica Moore and our entire crew, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Coming up next, Dial us in. It's game two of our CAA women's doubleheader as Elon visits Towson. Thanks for watching the CAA Game of the Week on Flax Sports Network.